The following is a production of the Department of Broadcasting at Western Illinois University. Hurricane Sandy's destruction toll is still on the rise as the total number in damages passes $20 billion. We'll have more ahead. Halloween night took an awful turn in Naperville, Illinois, as a woman is being accused of stabbing two children to death. And November is finally here. We've got you covered on what weather you should expect with Dana's forecast coming up. Live at 4 begins now with Rachel Steiming and Adam Yingst. Plus your local weather with Dana Zimmer. And sports with Aaron Viner. Good afternoon and welcome to Live at 4. I'm Rachel Stibing. And I'm Adam Yeast. The cleanup has begun after Hurricane Sandy ripped across parts of the East Coast earlier this week. Millions in the densely populated areas are still without power and roads, bridges and mass trans transit systems are flooded or damaged. The storm hit New Jersey homes the hardest, leaving several of those homeowners who left before the storm hit with little to come back to. The death toll from the superstorm has been rising and was at last at 68 victims, and some experts believe the cleanup along the coast could pass the billion dollar mark. Now with Superstorm Sandy past the east coast, is there another storm brewing to bombard the coastline? News 3's Dana Zimmer has more on that. Yes, Adam, in fact, there is a nor'easter storm that is uh, scheduled to hit the east coast at mid next week. However, conditions shouldn't be as severe as uh, Hurricane Sandy with just severe flooding around the coast. After the aftermath of Hurricane Sandy left the death toll in New York alone to 38 today, two of which including two boys ages two and four. Uh, power was cut to around 8.2 million people and estimated uh, $20 billion worth of the damage throughout the entire storm. Stay tuned to DYU TV3 for your full weather forecast a little later on. Back to you guys in the studio. WIU students got to partake in ROTC's annual Halloween pumpkin shoot on Tuesday. The event sounded like a ton of fun, so I decided to partake myself. It was my first time shooting, and I found out that it's not as easy as it looks. The shoot was sponsored by the rifle team, and all funds raised will go toward competition fees and maintenance costs throughout the year. If you missed this one, no worries. There are normally about four to six throughout the year. Tuesday's target featured images of ghosts, pumpkins, and bats, and all in the spirit of Halloween. Even though I didn't win a prize, it was definitely fun being out there. Good job, Adam. Well, Monday night was the last night to walk through the spooky haunted Higgins. The Fright Fest started last week and ran through the weekend accepting non-perishable food items as a part of admission. Monday ended with a more family-friendly night in which families around Macomb could bring their children to enjoy the ghouls of Higgins Hall. All proceeds go to the 2012 Stuff the Bus campaign that begins next Wednesday, November 7th. Residents of North Quad were able to witness a rather rare view last night as a car fire broke out. Students in Tanner Hall were able to take pictures of the fire. OPS stated that the fire was mechanically started and Macomb Fire Department was on the scene to put out the fire. The car was inside Tanner Circle when the fire started. <laughs> Good news for those wanting to stay in Macomb over fall break. Students now have a place to stay on campus now that Olson Hall has been reopened. Nightly rates are available for $17 plus tax. Weekly rates for fall break, winter break, and spring break are also available. Assignments are made on a first come, first serve basis. Anyone interested must register at least 48 hours in advance. Western Illinois had their 2012 Fall Semester Career Fair this past Tuesday. WIU TV3's Don Vickery has the coverage of the fair. Western Illinois University held their biannual career fair this week. Companies from all over the Midwest came out to see what kind of young talent the university is producing. Uh, well, the career fair is designed for students to have the opportunity to network with over, uh, this year, over 70 companies. Um, and the companies range from different industries, from construction, computer science, agriculture, education, business, uh, and everything in between. This gave students of a wide variety of majors a chance to come in, get their foot in the door, and help them obtain an opportunity for the future. Mainly to get my name out there to companies I'm interested in working with in the career area that I'm studying, which is accounting, and uh, try to distribute my resume a little bit and hopefully get a bite and get an internship or a job. 
I'm here at the Western Illinois University Fall Career Day. Whether you're a senior looking for postgraduate employment or just a freshman trying to decide what major you want, the Career Fair has everything you need to help you make that decision. A lot of companies are offering internship programs right now, so for students who are looking um, to see what they want to do you know, and start experimenting with different career fields, that's what they can do as well. The Career Fair is open to all students looking to further their future employment opportunities. For Live at Four, I'm Don Vickery. If you missed your chance this semester, don't worry. Another career fair will be held during the 2013 spring semester. Monday kicked off the Tri-State's AIS silent auction. The fundraiser allows the station to buy new radios as well as subscriptions to newspapers and magazines for their visually impaired audience. Photographs and descriptions of the items being auctioned off are already available to see on the station's website. The bids can be placed online or in the reading service studios of the station. There are more than 110 items in the auction, including gift certificates to area businesses and dozens of sports-related clothing items. Some of the items being auctioned off are two tickets to a 2013 St. Louis Cardinals game, a Roku HD streaming player, tickets to the Knox Galesburg Symphony, and a Bureau of Cultural Affairs show, a set of three handcrafted white oak tables made by L. Richard, and a one-month family membership to Barefoot Gardens. The auction continues through 4 p.m. on Thursday, November 8th. Well, here's something you may have never heard of, Gishwish. It stands for the greatest international scavenger hunt the world has ever seen. Each team is made up of 15 players from all over the world. Each team must find as many as they can from a list of 145 items. Some WIU seniors made their own team this year. The Jabberwocky loves ladder coins. They stopped in today to tell us about some of the wacky items on the list is um, you have to get a man to wear a kilt made out of cucumbers and nothing else. Um, Another one was someone modeling cheese on a classic car. And we have that one, and that one looked pretty good. So... If you want to help, let us know. Yeah, let us know. <laughs> the competition ends this Sunday at 11 p.m. The winning team will join Misha Collins in a private haunted castle in Scotland this May. And it's time again for the featured pet of the week. This week is Puff. He's a neutered male tabby cat. He's been at the shelter since October 2nd. They estimate that he is about five years old and weighs a little over eight pounds. Workers at the shelter call him Puff the Magic Dragon because he's always getting into something. He needs a good home and can be all yours for $25. For more information or for the adoption policy, you can contact the McDonough County Animal Shelter. Coming up after the break, Hurricane Sandy leaves a mess out east. An Illinois mom stabbed her son and a girl 150 times. And early voting is extended in Virginia. Those stories and more next. Look, honey, the neighbors just bought a big screen TV. Hey, I just got a bonus at work. Maybe we should get one, too. Hold on there. Savings man. Using your bonus to secure your future by paying down debt or saving is a better way to go. Well, I declare you're right, savings man. Stay ahead by choosing to save. And don't worry about keeping up with the Joneses. But their name is Johnson. For more tips and tools, visit choosetosave.org today. For others. It may have just been a summer job, but for me, it was training. Now I'm an Air Force pararescueman, and my job is to save lives. Make the right choices today, and be ready for the challenges tomorrow. This message is brought to you by the U.S. Air Force. Ever notice how many things today kids can do without actually moving? A whole lot of things their parents used to do the hard way. So many kids' activities today seem to leave out the activity part, which makes exercise even more important for children. In fact, new research tells us the best time to enhance bone development is during childhood and adolescence. And just getting children to walk an extra 35 minutes a day could spare them the pain of thinning bones later in life. Healthy bones come from healthy habits. Encourage your kids to get up, get out, and get moving. Hello. Hey, Grandma, how about another grape soda? A public service message on building strong bones for kids from the Pediatric Orthopedic Society of North America and the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. 
Gas station lines along the East Coast look similar to the lines outside retail stores on Black Friday. In the aftermath of Superstorm Sandy, long lines have formed for gasoline in the New Jersey town of Hazlitt. People lined up in cars and on foot carrying those red gasoline cans. More than two million homes and businesses are without power in the state, which has six, seen six deaths from the storm. President Obama visited the state yesterday. The White House says he and Governor Chris Christie viewed the widespread damage, talked with people trying to recover, and thanked the first responders. Yesterday, a Naperville woman stabbed two children to death inside her townhouse. Elzbieta Plakowska was babysitting a five-year-old girl and her seven-year-old son yesterday morning. Plakowska stabbed the five-year-old 50 times after she stabbed her son 100 times. Plakowska was covered in blood when she was taken into custody. She told the police a stalker had broken into the townhouse and killed the children. Then later said she heard voices and wanted to save the children's soul. Virginia's governor is asking areas hurt by Superstorm Sandy to extend their absentee voting hours. This after absentee voting was closed in nine counties on Monday and Tuesday because of the storm. The counties include several in the Metro DC area, including Arlington and Fairfax counties. Those two counties turned out in big numbers for candidate Barack Obama four years ago. Virginia is considered to be one of the closest swing states this election cycle. The absentee period was scheduled to end Saturday. Governor Bob McDonnell is urging voters to check with their local general registrar officers to find out how the hours have changed. Today was the last time for students around campus to vote early before the November 6th election. Early voting stations have been set up in the University Union Concourse since October 22nd. The stations ended their two-week stand at 3 this afternoon. For those students who didn't get an opportunity to vote early before the election date, make sure you are eligible to vote. You can also pick up an absentee ballot inside the courthouse located inside the square. You can like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter at news 3 tv for next Tuesday's Election Day coverage. Well, video games are becoming a bigger part of the holiday shopping season, and some people take it to extremes. Live at 4's Aaron Viner has more. It was 11.28 at night and 40 degrees outside. Most people are tucked away in their beds, but fans of the critically acclaimed video game series Assassin's Creed spent their night waiting in line for the series' newest title, Assassin's Creed 3. Uh, probably spend a good couple hours playing it, then I'll, uh, then I'll go to bed and wake up and go to class tomorrow morning. Probably. Video game developer Ubisoft reported that Assassin's Creed 3 is the biggest launch ever and, has, and most ambitious game in the company's history. An impressive claim after producing titles such as Prince of Persia and the Tom Clancy series. Although games like Assassin's Creed came out on Tuesday, there are other titles that are going to be coming out and hitting the shelves fairly soon. Uh, there's Black Ops 2 that's coming out and uh, Hitman. Bigger titles like Black Ops 2, Halo 4. And Call of Duty Black Ops 2, which releases on November 13th, had close to 2 million pre-orders as of October 27th, with Halo 4, which releases on November 6th, having just over 1 million pre-orders. The sales will continue to build up as the holiday season approaches, with some people looking ahead even further. After the holidays, Bioshock Infinite. Although these titles cost about $60 a piece, customers are happy to pay the price. Because they're fun. For Live at 4, I'm Aaron Viner. GameStop officials said they expect future midnight releases to have even greater attendance numbers. Walt Disney is adding Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader to its large cast of characters. George Lucas sold Lucasfilm to Disney for an astounding $4.1 billion. Lucas said he's loved watching Star Wars pass from generation to generation. Now he says it's time to pass the company to a new generation of filmmakers. It was a perfect match of two companies that are uh, constructed similarly, do the same kind of product. And um, I think uh, will, you know, it'll give me a chance to go off and explore my own interests at the same time feel completely confident that Disney, uh, you know, will take good care of the franchise I've built. And um, at the same time, you know, for me, I look at it as uh, uh, I'm investing in Disney because that's my retirement fund. 
Right after the break, Dana will have the full forecast. See what to expect this weekend in Macomb. At what age is the color that your skin was meant to be no longer beautiful? Every year, millions of young women try to change the skin they were born with and say they die for darker skin. Sadly, some actually do. Melanoma is the second most common cancer in teens and young adults, and one person dies from melanoma every hour. Change your thinking, not your skin. Stop tanning. Learn more at SpotSkinCancer.org. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology. Something's not right. My first symptoms were... Constant tingling in my toes. A double vision. They said you have multiple sclerosis. Kind of had to get a grasp on reality. I had to adapt and change very rapidly. I had to learn how to drive with my hands. Yeah, that was interesting. A symptom may cause you not to be able to do that anymore. And at one point, I wasn't able to do any of those. Since I've been cycling, it's definitely helped my walking. It's a fantastic opportunity to be working together with a common goal of carrying MS. And sharing is the key. I remember the moment. I'll never forget that moment. That moment? It was a moment that changed my life. I'd been training with my team for months, and now we had been called up for the first time. The real deal. Wildfires were getting dangerously close to homes. At that moment, I got my first taste of just how important the Guard is to my community. See how the Guard can be an important part of your life at NationalGuard.com. I'm a big believer in the power of we. We got each other, and that's a lie. We can tackle the tough challenges we face and build community through service and volunteering. We gotta hold on to what we got. It's time for you to raise your hand. Go to serve.gov and get involved in something you believe in. How will you raise your hand when they call your name? Are you with me? We weren't born. Well, we've had a beautiful start to November so far. We uh, reached a high of 64 today. I really feel like 64 is that those clouds cleared out during the afternoon. We saw winds west around 13 miles per hour, gusting more around 18. As for your regional radar, you can see not much going on over here. We had some uh, passing clouds today, but nothing bringing precipitation, bringing us in some fair weather. As for the U.S. surface, you can see that the low pressure system out east from uh, the hurricane is moving out north. and. Basically everything else, then nothing much is going on during um, in the central pla plains area. Pull, uh, looking at some regional temperatures, we can see Chicago high of 52 today, and Springfield high of 61. You can see about a 10 degree difference as uh, they are a little further north than us. And pulling out to our U.S. temps in the south, uh, high 70s, low 80s, and up north in Bismarck, nothing below freezing now, a high of 37. Friday surface, you can see we're going to be experiencing high pressure, which is going to bring us a nice day Friday, sunny skies, and um, no precipitation. As for Saturday, we can see that there's a low pressure to the south of us, and that, that might give us a chance of rain, um, bringing out periodically throughout the day, about 30% chance. As for tonight, we'll experience a low of 30, as we're going to have winds from the north, bringing in all the cool temps, uh, from 5 to 15 miles per hour, partly cloudy skies. And for tomorrow, We'll experience mostly sunny skies with a high of 53 as a little cooler than today as the winds are going to be shifting to the north at 5 miles per hour. Looking at our weekend, we can see it's going to be a pretty fair weekend and we do have a chance of showers on Saturday and Sunday. However, temperature is raging in the 50s and coming out on Tuesday we can see temperatures are um, increasing a little bit to 56 so we should experience a nice week next week as well. Well, we're definitely in that fall weather now. Yeah, we definitely are. It's going back. Starting to get pretty chilly. <laughs> that's for sure. Yes. Well, as it gets chillier, basketball season's about to officially get underway. I'll get you ready for Western's exhibition opener tonight, right after this. Tommy is a really good kid. He's really helpful around the house. He loves to play with his friends. He loves school, too. He's real smart. My Tommy would never e even think about trying alcohol. Isn't that right, sweetie? Real kids are curious about alcohol. 40% tried by the eighth grade. Talk early, talk often, get others involved. Okay, everyone, we have a lot to cover this morning. Tim should be here any second with the latest budget numbers to uh, take us through the initial 
schedule for production and... Ow. This is one way to avoid getting the H1N1 flu virus. <laughs> Whoopsie daisy. All right, good morning. Let's get this meeting started. For some better ways, visit flu.gov. <laughs> uh, anyone have a tissue? shelter here I come and no I'm not crazy or emotionally damaged that's a stereotype I just belong to a total loser I'm a good dog so if you want a pet adopt and if you see Randy tell him he dropped his wallet Western Western Illinois football is back home this week, coming off of a blowout 42 to three loss to Missouri State and the game this Saturday doesn't appear to be any easier. The University of Northern Iowa comes into town led by redshirt freshman quarterback Sawyer Cole Morgan, who is 35th in the nation in total offense. The Panthers come into the game at two and six and look to get their second conference win of the season. Western Illinois saw a new face last week in true freshman Hayden Northern, and his debut at quarterback was shaky, throwing for 42 yards and three interceptions. He figures to be, get good playing time this week against a Panthers defense that is ninth in the conference, allowing 352.2 yards per game. Western Illinois basketball is just about ready to get in the swing of things after losing the Summit League Conference Tournament Championship last year, and expectations are high for the Leathernecks. Western Illinois basketball is back for a new season this week after a successful run last season going 19 and 15 overall and ending with a heartbreaking loss against South Dakota State which would have put them in their first ever NCAA tournament. Despite losing Tommy Tyler and Obia Megano, assistant coach Billy Wright has high hopes for the new recruits. We feel that Adam Link and uh, Michael Okorobia can come in and help us right away. Uh, freshman point guard uh, Jordan Foster is doing a great job uh, learning from Ciola Clark and, and just trying to come in and, and be a staple for what we do. Defensive minded, uh, offensive, we want to move the ball, share the ball and get good shots each and time down the court. Western Illinois basketball is projected fourth in the preseason Summit League polls with key returners senior Terrell Parks and sixth year returning senior Ciola Clark who is thrilled for the upcoming season this Thursday. Either. To play here at Western and you know play the game that I love on the court, so it's going to be great to be out here on Thursday and in front of the fans as well. With the team's goals set on a conference championship banner, their journey starts Thursday night with an exhibition game against Harris Stowe State at Waste Management Court. For Live at Four, I'm Mitchell Winkleman. The game tips off at tonight at seven, and Western will host the Missouri University of Science and Technology in another exhibition matchup Monday night at Western Hall. Western Illinois women's basketball opens up their exhibition season tomorrow night with, when they take on Monmouth at 7 o'clock at Western Hall. Last season, the team ended with a high note upsetting Oral Roberts in the conference tournament, but losing in the semifinals. The team will play their second home exhibition contest against McMurray on Wednesday before opening up the season on the road against Iowa State on Sunday, November 11th. Well, the Chicago Bulls got the regular season underway last night as they took on the Sacramento Kings in the United Center. They were joined by some pretty unique characters here at the beginning of the game as Mario and Luigi were in attendance. But real as we get to the highlights, Thomas Robinson getting his first NBA bucket as a rookie. Now Rip Hamilton driving down. He'll kick up a three, putting the Bulls off. He had 19 points on the night for the Bulls. Luol Dang had a miss here, but is quickly put back up by Joe Kim Noah, who gets the harm as well. So that's going to be another free throw. He led the game with 23 points. 
and on this nice steal here by Tyree Evans, he's going to drive up with a nifty little finger roll, put it in, and they were coming back near the end, but the Bulls pulled away on this nice putback by Carlos Boozer, and he had 18 points on the night, and the Bulls went away with this one, 93-87. to They take on the Cavaliers tomorrow night in Cleveland. The Kansas City Chiefs and the San Diego Chargers meet tonight in the NFL. Both teams are looking to end dreadful losing streaks. The Chiefs have lost four in a row to stand at one and six, while the Chargers are on three game losing streak and are now at three and four. It's going to be strength against strength as the Chargers defense is currently ranked second in the league against rushing and the Chiefs hold the third best rushing attack in the league. The game will be at 7.30 tonight on NFL Network. In other news, Akib Tlaib also traded to the Patriots today and the NFL Players Association and, NF and the NFL donating a million dollars to Hurricane Sandy Relief Fund along with Charles Woodson, Packers defensive back, donating $100,000 as well. Him and just those are just a few of the organizations and players donating money. It's great to see that these athletes, you know, give money and really care. That's yeah, good. Charles Woodson's a good guy. <laughs> I like him. All right. Well, we'll show you a trick that definitely was not a treat for our TV anchor. How scary was it? See for your own eyes after the break. There is also a very attractive extended warranty option that includes free service and parts for the next five years. But there's no need for you to get that. You failed to get the test you needed at the doctor that would have detected disease early enough where it could have been treated. So you won't be around in two years to see him grow up, which means the warranty would be useless. OK, sign here, please. For a list of tests every man should have, go to AHRQ.gov. are at risk of foreclosure and losing their homes. Making Home Affordable is a free program from the U.S. government that has already helped over a million struggling homeowners like these. And we want to help you. I'm home. I'm home. And I love it. I'm home. I'm home. Find out now what your options are. Go to makinghomeaffordable.gov or call 1-888-995-HOPE. The sooner you act, the better chance we can help you. I'm home, I'm home, where I belong. Pumpkin carving experiment went very wrong on live TV in Indiana. Jason Lindsay, known as the Hooked on Science Guy, was trying to demonstrate how you can use a small explosion to carve a pumpkin. <laughs> Here's how it was supposed to go. He pre-cut the eyes, nose, and mouth of the pumpkin and filled it with a chemical formula. Once the gas built up inside the pumpkin, he ignited it with a lighter and the eyes, nose, and mouth were supposed to pop right out. He apparently allowed the pumpkin to fill up with too much gas, so when he lit it with the lighter, it exploded. No one was hurt. Though. Well, that's the good part, though, that's right? <laughs> Sometimes things go wrong, that's all right. True. <laughs> All right, well, that's all the news that we have for you today. For Aaron Viner, I'm Rachel Stibing. And for Dana Zimmer, I'm Adam Yinks. We'll see you here next Thursday.